Dark Cast Network, Indie Pods with a Dark Side. I feel like it was just Monday, but here we are again with another bite sized episode to go over some of the latest headlines from this past week. We have a much awaited guilty plea in the Natalie Holloway case. Alec Murdoch is back in the news. And the attorneys from the Delphi case have withdrawn. There's never a dull moment these days, it seems. I'm Amber. And I'm Gina. And let's get into the headlines that had us saying OMG this week. Joran Vandersloot, the Dutch national who was accused of killing Natalie Holloway in Aruba in May of 2005, made a guilty plea in an Alabama court last week and confessed to killing her. The plea is in relation to extortion and wire fraud charges stemming from a 2010 grand jury indictment in which prosecutors claimed Vandersloot extorted about $25,000 from Beth Holloway, Natalie's mother in exchange for the location of Natalie's remains and the circumstances of her death. But of course, he never actually led her to any remains. Natalie Holloway was last seen on May 30th, 2005, leaving a bar with Vandersloot during a high school graduation trip. According to his confession, the then 17-year-old teenager hit Natalie over the head with a cinder block when she turned down his sexual advances and then dragged her into the ocean. Unfortunately, Natalie's remains have not been found. This fact leads a lot of experts in the field to question his confession, especially because he has a history of changing his story and originally claimed that Natalie fell and hit her head on a rock, and then he and his father hit her body, or that she was a victim of human trafficking. Paul Morrow, a retired NYPD detective, told Fox News that how she died is more than likely true, but think there's still more to the cover-up. Bodies that have been dumped in water tend to float to the surface and wash ashore, so Vandersloot's claim that he pulled her into shallow water doesn't hold up. John Kelly, a criminal profiler and president of Stalk, Inc., stated that in the true crime world, there's a rule of thumb they always follow— If you throw a body in the water, some of it's going to surface, if not all. It's only a matter of time. Regardless of what the experts might say, Natalie's parents are satisfied with Vandersloot's confession. Between the tape's confession, Miami FBI and Alabama FBI corroboration, and a polygrapher, Dave and Beth Holloway feel confident that his confession is true. Dave did state the questions will forever remain about the extent to which others participated in depriving them of the opportunity to return Natalie's remains to Alabama. Vandersloot was sentenced to 20 years in prison with credit for time already served. Oh yeah, he's already serving a 28-year prison sentence for the 2010 murder of Stephanie Flores, a 21-year-old woman he killed in Peru, Five years to the day Natalie Holloway went missing in Aruba. He will be eligible for parole in 2043. And apparently, when he confessed to Stephanie Flores' murder, he said that he was very sorry and felt horrible about it. This is obviously a guy with a history of abuse towards women. I mean, he was 17 when he killed Natalie, who is 18 at the time. This is, and it makes you wonder, were there other women that he killed in that time period because they turned him down? I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there was. Uh, He should not be getting out of prison at any time. This man should be dying in prison. So it's pretty gross that you can murder two people. I mean, he didn't get a he didn't get convicted of murdering Natalie, unfortunately, and he probably never will. This is as good as it's going to get mm-hmm. as far as that goes, but at least they do have an actual confession now. Um but I mean, we've always known that it was him. Always. So, I mean, he was brought in multiple times for questioning right after it happened. He and his friends were, and they just never had enough to actually charge him with anything. But he's always been the number one suspect in this case. So 
I don't think anybody's really surprised that he confessed to doing it, but at least now we have a definitive answer about what happened. But unfortunately, we're still never going to find her. So, what a piece of shit. (laughs) Man, people suck. Mm Mm-hmm. Anyway, Alec Murdoch is back in the news yet again after being sentenced to two life terms for the fatal shootings of his wife, Maggie, and son, Paul, in June of 2021. A 911 call from Alec reporting he found the lifeless bodies of his wife and son started a two-year-long ordeal with subsequent Netflix, CNN, Oxygen, and other specials. We can't forget when Alec was shot at when his car got a flat tire on the side of the road almost a month after the murders of his wife and son either. The plot thickens with every single turn of this case, and on March 3rd, he was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences for the murders, all the while proclaiming his innocence. Just a few days after his sentencing, a notice to appeal was filed but did not include arguments from his legal team, who had raised several issues at trial. Fast forward to September 5th, his lawyers filed a motion seeking a new trial after allegedly uncovering evidence of jury tampering. In the motion, Rebecca Hill, the Colleton County Clerk of Court, is accused of tampering with the jury by advising them not to believe Murdoch's testimony and other evidence presented by the defense, pressuring them to reach a quick guilty verdict, and even misrepresenting critical and material information to the trial judge in her campaign to remove a juror she believed to be favorable to the defense. Three jurors came forward after the August 1st release of Rebecca Hill's memoir, Behind the Doors of Justice, the Murdoch Murders, with interviews prompting the allegations. Murdoch's lawyers also wrote, quote, Miss Hill did these things to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. Miss Hill betrayed her oath of office for money and fame, end quote. A spokesperson for the South Carolina State Attorney General who prosecuted the murder case said, quote, we will respond through the legal process at the appropriate time, end quote. In the coming weeks, the judge who oversaw the murder trial, Judge Clifton Newman, is expected to hold a hearing. This is so infuriating. Can you imagine if that circus goes back to trial? No. No. And if, if it does go back to trial and there is a mistrial or his sentence is overturned... Oh my god, I'm sorry he fucking murdered them. He murdered them. <laughs> there's Ugh. there's too much there's too much information out there showing that like he had every reason to murder them. And the fact that this woman used her own selfish reasons to possibly completely like ruin the outcome of this case is just gross. Gross. Yeah. Gro. Mm. <sighs> yeah, no. That was not the headline I wanted to see this week. <laughs> it's like, really? We have to hear more about this fucking guy now? I'm so sick of his name. Like, I'm so sick of his name and his red face. I'm so sick of him. <laughs> Just let him rot in prison where he deserves to be and leave it alone. Like, Just move on. Just move on. In our third and final headline for the week... Richard Allen, the suspect in the Delphi murders, was set to go to trial in January of 2024, but due to recent events, it appears that the date will be pushed back. Images of the crime scene taken in the wooded area off of the Monon High Bridge Trail, where Liberty German and Abigail Williams were murdered on February 13th of 2017, were shared via text and appeared on social media. During a hearing on Thursday, both of Allen's attorneys announced their intent to quit the case. The photos were allegedly leaked by someone close to Allen's defense team and has since committed suicide. Carroll County Judge Fran Gull said during the hearing, quote, We've had an unexpected turn of events, ladies and gentlemen. Early this afternoon, the defense attorneys have withdrawn the representation of Mr. Allen, end quote. She ordered Allen to be sent back to Westfield Correctional Facility and for his counsel to send discovery back to the state of Indiana. 
In a filing from Allen's defense team, it stated that attorney Andrew Baldwin trusted a friend to respect his office space, but he was betrayed. And since then, the defense team has reportedly taken steps to keep all the Delphi-related items locked away, either in a room or fireproof file cabinet, to make sure nothing is left unattended. Baldwin's attorney, David Hennessy, stated that Allen's attorney did not quit the case, but withdrew under coercive circumstances. Regardless, crime scene photos that should not have been shared were shared, and Richard Allen is now in need of new counsel. Good luck with that. My first thought was, they don't even want to deal with this guy's bullshit anymore, (laughs) so they're quitting. But this is very disturbing, the fact that somebody close to this case would leak those photos. You know, I get that everybody has a morbid curiosity about stuff like this. I mean, not everybody will admit it out loud, but the majority of people do have a morbid curiosity. So I understand, Mm -hmm. but this is an ongoing case. Leave Mm -hmm. it the fuck alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're... You're screwing with a lot of people's jobs right now. And this is a serious task that they have. Like even, you know, people give defense attorneys a hard time because like who's going to represent these scum of the earth kind of people. But like they deserve their representation too. Somebody has to do it. Exactly. So now what what do we do? Do we start over? I mean, because who's going to (laughs) represent? Who wants to step up to the plate now? (laughs) So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I feel really bad for the families of the victims because now here they are stuck not knowing when a trial is going to happen and when some justice can be brought for, you know, Abby and Libby because I am sorry. He definitely looks like the guy in those pictures. And there's a lot of things that tie him to being there that day. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think things look good for him. Well, that concludes this week's OMG Monday. But make sure you're subscribed wherever you're listening to us so you don't miss when we release a new episode. Join the Weird True Crime podcast group to get in on some extra chaos. We have one more Wicked Wednesday to share with you before we say goodbye to Spooky Month. So, until next time, stay safe and make good choices. Bye. Bye.